In this video, we'll be seeing a uh, method to secure JWTs. Um, and why we are doing this is that usually when we store the tokens um, or the JWT tokens uh, on the browser, uh, what happens is that they are uh, open to attacks and uh, and they are also not safe when we store them um, in the cookies. Uh, even though they might be HTTP only cookies, uh, they are vulnerable to kind some kind of attack. So it might be better, um, not uh, a perfect solution like a perfect security concern, but um, it might be better if we store um, so if we implement some kind of method so that this token does not appear in the browser or does not be stored in the browser so this is a usual method uh, how tokens are stored there would be a JWT token stored in the cookie and the cookie sends I mean it is sent as a header when you send a request and um, the token is uh, authenticated in the backend and then if the token is valid then the user would be able to access the protector tools so that's how it uh, always works and it has been working until now an alternate method is to use a counter kind of thing so what this means is that uh, you have a counter and each time you sign in the counter increments and this counter is mapped to the token that has been created when you sign in and this uh, token is stored at the backend and we can use redis for that you can uh, you know this id and the token are a key value pair so you can store that in redis uh, and uh, yeah that i think that uh, is how this works whenever you send and you store this id uh, uh, in the browser and you send this id uh, to the redis and you get the token and <clears throat> the token can be used to authenticate the user so that's what we're going to do so yeah let's get started so i have um, a jwt redis folder which is empty right now which is a new folder i want to do np minute to um, uh, get a package.json and i should have done dash y but yeah this works and now we can install the required packages which are in this case i think we need will be needing express uh, we'll be we are dealing with uh, JWT, so we'll be needing that as well. So we, we we can say JSON Web Token, and also we need Node Mon as well for restarting the server, and Body Parser for passing the um, body which is coming from the front end, and also we'll be needing Redis, and of course we need to store the key value pair. So we can uh, now create an index.js file, and we can fill in with our usual Express boilerplate. So we can say Express is equals to require Express. And we can create an instance of app. Oh, sorry, instance of instance of Express, and we can store that in app variable. And also, we'll be needing a port. So we can say for for now, we can say just five thousand. And app will listen at that port. And on uh, listening, we can say it will print a statement saying server is at this port. So that should do for our base, and we can try to start a server. Start try to start the server now. You can say node mon, and you can see that server is 5000. That works, and we'll be um, we need to initialize a Redis as well. So we will be saying Redis is equals to require Redis, and let's say client is equals to Redis dot. That will create a client for you whenever we will be using redis we can use the client variable instead of uh, the redis variable because we, redis is used to create a client and this client um, we can make use of this for queries and next one is we will be needing a um, body parser so we can bring that here let's say body parser will be requiring the body parser so you can uh, use the body parser module by saying app.use uh, body parser dot json I think that should do let's save and start the server again yeah, the server starts I want to create a new route so let's say app dot post slash login and it will be taking request and response as callback parameters and if this was uh, if this was a uh, real application then what would be doing is that we'll be taking the email and password or something or uh, some body like that and then uh, authenticating by checking the db and then creating a token uh, but uh, that would be a waste of time in this case because we'll be uh, we know that uh, we don't need to use db here because uh, because we can uh, keep things simple so what i'll be doing is that i can say fake user is equal to be creating an object of this user and this user has a name let's say uh, John and he also has a email let's say uh, John at mail.com so this and let's say he has also a password password would be pass1234 
So this is a fake user and we can use this user to uh, create a token and store the token in this uh, and store the user in that token. What I want to do in this route is that um, uh, we have created the fake user here and uh, we can use that fake user to create a token and we this this uh, route will be having two steps one is that we'll be creating a token so first is that uh, we'll be creating a counter or you can say increment the counter and then uh, map the counter to a newly created token send the uh, counter as response to store it in a cookie So this is the three steps that we will be using. I mean, the third step is the obvious one, but uh, these are the three steps that would we'll be following. So before even uh, incrementing the counter or mapping the counter to token, we need those Redis elements, right? We don't have a counter right now. We don't have a token kind of thing or uh, the way to map a uh, counter to token. So what we'll be needing to do is that we need to let's open a terminal uh, vertically, and we can say Redis dash CLI, and that opens a CLI for you. Um, if you have Redis installed, so what you can see is that you can say set counter zero. Uh, that would initiate the counter to zero, and now you can use uh, the counter to increment it. Now you, what you can do is you can uh, map this count value of this counter to token. So uh, keep in mind that we'll be mapping the not the counter to token, but the value of uh, the to counter to the token. Uh, I think you might understand if we implement that. So you can use a, a variable client here and you can say client.get counter in a string and what comes back is the error and data and now um, we can set the uh, date I mean the data is a count a counter value we are getting so now what we want to do is we want to uh, increment the counter right so we can say client.set counter I want to pass in data plus one and why are we even doing parsing because you know you can see that uh, if you do get counter this zero is being stored as a string so if in JavaScript if you do zero plus zero as strings if it would give you zero zero so you need to pass this into a string I mean into an uh, integer and then you add one to that so that the counter increments so after doing this we have incremented the counter and now what we have we have done this one right and what we need to do is we need to map the counter value of the counter to newly created token so before that we will even need to create a uh, token so for that we will be needing to import let's say the uh, json web token package let's import json web token and for the token data we will be using this fake users data so now we can say jwt dot assign you can sign the payload which is the fake user and what comes back is the token and now you can say again client.set and we can use the uh, the counter incremented value which is pass into of data plus one because it's the current value of the counter you can say pass into of data plus one and set that to token and finally what we'll be doing is we'll be just returning the json or we can say uh, cookie you can just do rest dot cookie let's say jwt dash id and we'll be giving percent of data plus one and yeah we can just return done or you can say logged in and let's try if this works let's open postman and I was we should actually start our server so let's exit this and let's say node mom. Okay. Let's do a post request to localhost 5000 slash login. It's giving us an error because we forgot to uh, give a secret which is which is which needs to be passed after this payload so let's say for now let's say secret and also after, uh, with this secret we'll also be needing to provide uh, any objects like expire string we can say uh, the expiry date of the uh, token let's say one day which is 1d 
and out comes the the token also with an error so this would be the callback so let's see if this work or not and you can see that it's saying logged in and let's see if any uh, cookies are set okay there's one cookie and uh, so uh, you can see that uh, jwt id is equals to 5 is the token uh, i mean is a counter being set as a cookie and if we go back into redis and if we go into redis dash cli and if we say get counter you can see the value is 5 and that 5 is being sent to uh, this cookie and we can also see if we want to get 5 then you can see there is this uh, long string which is a token being stored we uh, being mapped uh, to this id so i think uh, that does what we uh, need to do so now what we need to do is authenticate the user when any re any request is coming to this so now let's say let's create another route so until now what we have done is that uh, we have uh, got the counter i mean we got the value of counter and what we did, did is that increment the value of counter by 1 and then for the incremented cookie value I mean the incremented counter value we have set the token to I mean we map the token so if the cookie value is 4 right now when you hit the slash login root it would increment it to 5 and it would create a new token and map that token to this uh, value of 5 so that's what it is doing and it would create a cookie for that value 5 map uh, value 5 and send it to the browser so if we want to access some protected route let's say app.post slash protected we'll be receiving the request and response as well we can uh, use a fake user if you want um, you, you can see that we are uh, signing the fake user here so this token would be I mean this token would be having uh, the fake users data and if we can see if that's uh, valid or not if that's uh, that we can if we can decrypt the token or not so in order to do that again there are a few steps uh, this time what we'll do is um, we can get the counter value right and then uh, get the token value using the using the counter and then uh, get the payload inside the uh, token so these are the three um, steps that would be doing in this route so first thing is that we need the value of counter so let's say uh, not the uh, counter in the redis value because if there are like 10 users the counter would be incrementing so what we need is a counter of the requested um, browser so we can get that in the body maybe uh, or, or in the headers yeah, it's uh, any way you like uh, in this case let's say it as an id it's a requested body and for right uh, right now let's just console uh, uh, the id if we are getting it or not let's open a server let's say node mode and go to postman and this time i want to hit slash protected root as is the post root we can send a body with it also let me send a json uh, value to into that and that would be id which is 5 if this was a browser you can send that directly from the cookie value so let's try sending that and you can see that we are getting the value 5 here ok so as we are getting that we can use this id value to uh, get the token as well we can do client dot uh, get and the value of id inside this stri um, strings and we will be getting the data back and let's see what the data is and it's saying null um, might be maybe because we did not it is being sent as an integer not as a string so might we can change that to string like by adding a plus this one plus a string callback is wrong we need to give it as error comma data because the error is the first argument and if it's data then we are just console.login error so let's clear the screen and say node want to run the server 
and let's send the request again and you can see the token is coming up and now we can use this token to uh, you know decrypt the what's inside the token so we can say jwt dot verify and I want to verify the data because that's the token and what we'll be getting is hopefully the error and um, let's say the payload maybe and for now let's see console.log payload let's save that and um, let's send the request again so hopefully we I think this might be an async function let's try again and you can see that uh, the payload is coming up you can see the name email and password the same as the fake user here um, so yeah that's uh, how you uh, this if this was a real application this uh, you know this fake user or the when you're signing you get this user from the DB and when uh, you know you can show that in the token and uh, this is how you decrypt this it's not the perfect security mechanism but I think that uh, works if you are uh, looking into some security measures and I think we can test this inside the browser also let's go to Chrome um, if we can if we need to test that we can I think we can change this into get root because we are not getting I mean, we are not getting any body from the user I mean, from the browser so we can just say get and now we can just post it again uh, get it again you can say it's logged in and if you go inside the cookies tab let's see what type of cookie it's storing you can see that uh, JWT dash ID is storing 6 and that's the current value of the cookie and somewhere other, other user might uh, again log in and the value can change that's why when we are uh, signing in you know when we are uh, accessing the protected route we are sending our browser's ID value and not the current counters value yeah uh, thank you for watching and if this helped you uh, make sure you subscribe like and share this video and yeah thank you for watching